Hi folks, so here's an example of a Nyquist analysis for a loop transfer function that has some poles on the imaginary axis. This one's not too bad um, in terms of the stability analysis, but let's just go through the process. So the first thing that we're going to do to make our Nyquist plot is to draw or sketch out the Nyquist contour looks like this. It avoids those pesky poles on the imaginary axis. And there's the directionality of it, sort of a clockwise thing. So that's our S-plane. Let's take a look at this also in the root locus world. Um, over here, just so that we can quickly see what we expect to get out of our Nyquist analysis, at least for positive K. Uh, investigations. So as soon as we go from k equals 0 forward, the thing is stable. So even for extremely large values of k. Can't really tell for negative values of k, and that's what we'll get from our Nyquist plot too. Also, we can see here that when we look at the loop transfer function and the Nyquist contour, that there are no loop transfer function poles enclosed by it, so p is equal to 0. Well, let's sketch this stinker. Um, so let's see, we have this little piece going from the origin up to the first cutout. So that's this. And that would be this little piece up here. And then we have the, the part uh, due to the cutout. So just to get a handle on how that happens, if we were to draw arrows from, let's not draw it to there, let's draw it right to the start of our cutout for those two poles as we go through around this little tiny cutout you know it's infinitesimally small the contribution of the to the phase to that zero in that pole is nothing however the contribution of the phase due to this pole is whoops <laughs> as we go around like that so again, we can start here and go like so, is 180 degrees. And that's this thingy, or feature, I should say. Okay, so here's the negative um, j omega axis and the cutout in the negative j omega axis. So if we work our way around this, there's A to B, the cutout from B to C, and then the other um, nice, large, imaginary axis part from C to D. And that transfer function is strictly uh, proper. So as we go to infinity for S, we'd go to the origin in the Nyquist plot. Hence, this value of D goes to that point. OK, and now we have our directionality with some arrows. It's all good can do it from the negative side also. And, you know, they, there's nothing too mysterious with these arrows. They just kind of go like this. Like so. So they don't have, you know, discontinuities in them. They don't switch directions as you go from positive to negative. Okay, and now here's our negative directions. B prime, C prime, D prime is the same as D. And there we go. Now, so let's do our positive K analysis. And look at that. If we are anywhere on that side of the imaginary axis and we were to draw a ray, we have a grand total of no encirclements. And since Z is equal to P plus N, Z is the number of um, closed loop poles in the right half plane, and n is equal to 0 due to this little ray that I just drew, we know that there are no poles in the right half plane. What a wonderful thing. <clears throat> and now we can do our negative k analysis, and this word gets potentially a little bit more interesting. So if we look at this little piece, um, and to get it, we identify first that this point is at 1. So we say negative k, negative 1 over k is equal to, or less than 1, or I could say equal to 1, which then tells us that k is equal to negative 1 at that point. And if 
we look at that little green shaded area right here, that's for um, absolute values of k that are large. Otherwise, you can think of it as very small values of k because it's very negative. So anyway, if we look in that region and draw a ray, we have one encirclement, and so there's one right half plane pole. It's not because it's one encirclement necessarily, but it's because p is equal to zero, and n is equal to one, and z is the important one, is the important part, which is p plus n. And so one right half plane pole. And now we go out here for um, values of k that are larger than negative 1, which means they're between 0 and negative 1. And when we put the ray on here, we have two encirclements, and so two right half-plane poles. And there you go. So the only way to make this system stable is to make k positive. Okay, so let's look at this in MATLAB for just a minute. We'll take a look at Nike C. And then um, we'll look at the Nyquist generated plot, or I'm sorry, the MATLAB generated plot, and verify our little stability analysis. Okay, so first let's do the Nike C. And we get that. Oh, that's a beautiful looking Nyquist plot, if I must say so. Um, we can see that we have this little piece here at 1, just like we had in our sketch. We have these crazy um, pieces at infinity that, you know, obviously it's not really infinity. If you look at the script, you'll see that you can make those look more like infinity by um, changing some parameters. Okay, so that's that. Lovely. Now let's look at the MATLAB generated Nyquist plot. Uh, hmm. So. That's a little bit hard to interpret out of the box. We can see it's out at 10 to the 7th, but they have this nice feature that lets you zoom in a bit. So there's the zoom in, and that certainly looks like our sketch and the, my script, but it's only a little piece of it. So we're just seeing, we're not really seeing the, um, those semicircles at infinity, which could mess up the analysis a little bit. Um, so the point of this is that you know you can generate the Nyquist plot with MATLAB, but you need to spend some time to interpret what it is you're seeing and maybe fill in the blanks of some of the things that you're not seeing. Okay, so now let's do our, our verification of the analysis that we did just a moment ago. Um, so for large values of k, we found that the system is stable. So I'm just going to pick you know k equal 10. And then let's make a closed loop transfer function. Like so, and we could um, get the roots, get the poles. So there's our closed loop poles, wonderfully stable, beautiful. Now we found that for k greater than negative one, um, uh, I, I didn't quite say that right, that for k um, um, with sort of the absolute value of k greater than negative 1, so in other words, large values of negative k, that we should have a right half plane pole. So let's take a look at that. How about we just go with negative 10? There's our one right half plane pole, exactly as the analysis predicted. Very cool. And for k between 0 and negative 1, we should get two right half plane poles. So let's do uh, this. That's between negative 1 and 0. There's the closed loop transfer function if you want to take a look at that. There it is. And let's get the roots. Oh, look at that. A couple of nasty right half plane poles for a small negative value of k, just as the Nyquist analysis predicted. Okay, so there you have it, um, a, an example of a using a modified Nyquist
contour to evaluate the stability of a loop transfer function that is, let's call it marginally stable. It has a couple of poles on the imaginary axis. Enjoy!